the two charges uh, are all on the same. Let me see. Uh, okay, you don't. We don't have the positive or negative, but I just assume they are positive. Okay, all the values is Q1 and the Q2. And where is uh, zero point? If we have x axis, and I put, uh, let me see, zero here. And at zero, I put the Q1 here, and I put Q2 here. And let me see what's the separation. The separation is, is S. This is S. And this is separation. And we are looking for a point uh, where the electric field is equal to zero. And we say, uh, if you want to find the zero point, they should have the same sign. These two charges should have the same sign. That means both are positive or both are negative. Um, because for the positive, then you will have the electric field, one going this way and the other going this way. Then eventually they canceled. But if we have one positive and one negative, you will find that oh, if we have one positive and one negative, you'll find um, uh, in the in between, the positive gave a direction in this way and negative gave direction in this way. They, they have the same direction, so there's nowhere to have a zero point. And if you go to outside, and you will have the positive go in, let's see, uh, positive goes to this way, and negative goes to this way. It seems they will cancel, but if you check, um, the value, because we say the Q1 and the Q2 are different. So they are close. So the electric field generated by this Q2 is larger than the electric field generated by the Q1. So in this case, um, the direction is always in this way. And there's nowhere to get zero. And also, this question is asked to find the point in between where zero. So we just assume they are all positive. X, this is zero, this is S, Q1, Q2. Okay, then let's calculate the electric field. Suppose as uh, the zero point is here, X, then the electric field generated by the Q1 is equal to KQ1 over X squared. And the electric field generated by the Q2 will be a KQ2 over S minus X squared. Okay. Then if they cancel, the E1 should equal to E2. Right, so we have Q1 over X squared equal to Q2 over S minus X squared. And we can um, do the square root on the both sides. Then we have square root Q1, square root Q2. There's an X squared cancels as X and X S minus x. So we have q1 times s minus x equal to q2 times x. Then after the uh, reorganization, we will have x equal to the q1 s over q1 plus q2. that we have this result. This is uh, question eight. Then let me see, the last question will be number 11. Okay, number 11, flux. Um, electric flux 
the in the figure in the figure the file one is larger and or smaller or equal to five two and so here is one and this one we compare the electric flux over this two surface and if we uh, go back to the definition of the electric flux the flux is equal to a surface integral of electric field times the surface area um, and the surface what the file one will be uh, the electric field times the surface one and the phi two equal to the integral e times the e times surface two okay and because the electric fields on the first surface and the second surface are the equivalent so the e is the same and you can also find that um, this two surface have the same shadow on the direction of the electric field then let's see how to calculate the, the integral for the electric field times the surface area we have uh, think about it in this way suppose we have the surface a plane surface and we define the direction of this surface is a normal direction this is a normal direction so we have surface a and the a is the area of this surface and if i put an arrow on the top that means the area is a vector and the direction of this area is a normal direction of the surface if we have a curved surface then you will find the different position has different direction but the direction is normal to the surface the perpendicular direction okay so if we have a surface in this way and direction is in this way and the electric field is parallel with the surface that means the electric field is normal to the direction of the surface if the e is uh, perpendicular to the a in this case then we have this multiplication equal to zero because e dot a will be equal to zero if the two vectors are perpendicular then the dot product is equal to zero this is some math if they are not um, perpendicular then we will have electric field times the area equal to the electric field intensity or the strength times the surface area times cosine theta theta is the angle between the electric field and the area for example i use another color Uh, in this case, the electric field is to the right, and the direction of the surface is normal surface. This is the direction of the surface. This is A, this is B. So the angle is in between. Now you will find that if we do the calculation of A times cosine theta, that will be the surface area on this direction. It will be the A as a component of horizontal. I will use a capital H to represent the horizontal. So if we do this integral, we have to switch to the E times EA times cosine theta. This is a strength. Then you will find that the surface area times the cosine theta actually is a surface area uh, in the direction of the, e, the shadow. So the the uh, the arc has a shadow on the semi surface. This is a sphere. So we will find that 
the A1 is equal to the A2 times cosine theta. So we will have phi1 equal to phi2. Okay, let me go back here. So we have the final result. By one equal to phi two. So we only need to calculate if we are going to calculate the flux, we just need to calculate the area of the shadow in the uh, electric field. Suppose this is a sun, say the sun, and the sun emits a light in this direction. The electric field is in the sunlight and this arc or this drawn has a shadow on the ground. Then you will find that the flux for the surface two is equal to this uh, flux of the surface one. Okay, so this is the Martian physics problem I'm, I'm going to talk today. And I have one more question, so that's the question eight, uh, how to calculate the electric field generated by an uh, electrical wire. But before we talk about that, I have to switch to the Gaussian's law. Okay. Gaussian's law, let me go back here. Okay, so. Today, I want to spend some time to talk about Gaussian's law. Gaussian's law. Maybe the spell is wrong. Gaussian's law. Right. So Gaussian's law uh, is a question how to calculate the electric field generated by a charged object. If we have uh, many point charge, we have many point charge and each charge has different value q1 q2 q3 and and so on then to calculate the electric field uh, as some position some position for example calculate the electric field here then we just need to calculate the electric field generated by each charge then we have E1, E2, and the EI, and so on. Then the electric field is a total. We sum up, that's the electric field. But this, uh, this equation only apply for the point charge. Suppose we have a charged sphere or charged bowl. There is a ball, and on the ball, there are many charges. And the distribution is uniform. Then how do we calculate the electric field generated by this ball? I suppose we're going to calculate the electric field here. So one stupid way to calculate the electric field is to separate this ball into different small part, we separate into many, many segments. And each segment to be treated as a point charge. Then each point charge is going to generate an electric field at this point. Then we sum all sum up all the charges. And the electric field will be a approximately equal to the electric field generated by so many points. And if we have enough points and each point is small enough, then the electric field we calculate is very close to as a, the sum of the electric field. So this is just a approximate, but we can do the calculus then eventually all the electric field is going to convert into a value. That value is the electric field. But this is a very difficult way to do. And we don't want to do that. Do we have other way to calculate the electric field generated by 
and continuous charge object. So the question is uh, electric field generated by a continuous continuous electric field or continuous uh, charge object. Okay, then actually uh, we have a method. This method is called Gaussian's law. So let's calculate the electric flux of a point charge. Suppose I have positive charge and this positive charge generates electric field anywhere. And I sketch a sphere, a closed sphere, and put the charge on the center of the sphere. Then let's calculate the flux through this sphere. The flux will be the integral integral of the electric field times the surface area of the of the surface because the charge is at the center so the electric field on the sphere surface is uniform if this is a uniform then i can take the electric field outside the integral we have e times the integral of the a okay and also we know the surface direction is in the radial direction. And the, the electric field is also on the same direction. So the cosine theta in between is zero. So that will be equal to one, right? So the flux is equal to the electric field strength times the integral of the surface area. And in the math, we know this is a total surface area of the sphere. So that will be equal to the electric field times uh, four pi r squared. R is a distance from the center to the surface. From the center to the surface. This is r. The radius of sphere we sketch because we sketch a surface. So the surface has a radius. And you will find that the electric field is equal to, on the surface is equal to K U over R squared times the surface area and the R cancel. So we have four pi K Q. Okay, that means the flux is independent um, of the of the radius. This is nothing to do with. This is not a function of a radius. That means the flux is independent. independent of the radius. This is a very important conclusion. Um, the next question is, if we sketch another surface, and this surface is not a sphere, but any shape, this surface is closed, do we have the same results? And the answer is yes, because we can think about it in this way. We know in the surface integral, the surface integral, the electric field and the surface area. For the area, if we have the center of the surface and each segment of the area has a distance from the center to the surface. This is R, this is R1, this is R2, and the DA1, DA2. The surface area is proportional to the 
is 10 squared because we have the dimension, right? The area has a dimension of meter squared. The, the meter actually here is uh, by the distance from the center to the surface. And we have the electrical field is proportional to the one over R squared. Electric field at first point and electric field at the second point is four over R2 square. So that means if we multiply the electric field by the surface area, we will have something proportional to the R square, one over R square times the R square. Eventually the R square just cancel. Then we will have uh, multiplication independent of the radius. So if we calculate the flux of a enclosed or a closed surface, then the flux has nothing to do with uh, radius. So the flux is not a, a function of radius. That means the electric field through a closed surface is independent of the geometry of the surface we sketch. So if we have a charge and we sketch any surface, the electrical flux over the surface is independent of the geometry of the closed surface. This is very important. The first one, the surface should be closed. If it's an open, open surface, for example, if we have charge, we calculate the flux of a plane, then this doesn't um, apply to this conclusion. And unless we close the surface, I sketch another surface and include the charge into the surface, then we will have uh, total flux independent of the geometry. Okay, and what's the value of the flux? The flux only depends on the charge included inside the surface. Go to this. If we have two charges, for example, if we have two charges, Q1, Q2, and we sketch surface and calculate the flux, the flux will be equal to electric field times the surface area. And you will find that the electric field at any surface could be separate by the electric field generated by the first charge plus the electric field generated by the second charge times the dA. And we can separate them like electric field times oh, electric field times the surface area plus the second electric field times the second uh, the total surface area. And this is equal to four pi k times the first charge, plus this is equal to four pi k times the second charge. Okay, we can go back here. Yep, this is what we get. And the total flux of a closed surface is equal to four pi k times the charge inside. If we have two charges, we just need to use four pi k times the total charge included. Then if we have a charge outside of the surface, then do we need to uh, include this charge inside this formula, formulation? No, because this charge doesn't contribute to the flux because the electric field 
will generate in this way. And all the electric field goes in. And this electric field will go out. This will go out. So how much it goes in? The electric field in should equal to how much electric field goes out. So the in equal to out. So the flux generated by this chart Q3 is equal to zero. So that means we only need to uh, consider the charge inside the surface, not outside the surface. Okay, if this is true, then let's go to calculate uh, the electric field generated by a bore. So now there is a bore, and the bore has a charge of Q. And to calculate the electric field, we only need to sketch a surface to enclose the charge, charge the ball, and make sure they have the same center. Okay, and we know the distance we sketch of the, this surface is R. Then the electric field on the surface, on this surface, this black surface times the total surface area is equal to four pi k q. Okay, this is from the Gaussian's law. The electric field times the total surface area of a closed surface equal to four pi k q. This is Gaussian's law. And we know the surface area of a sketched sphere is four pi r square. Then the electric field would be equal to the flux four pi k q over the total surface area. That would be four pi r square. So we have k u r square. Okay, this is how we uh, do the uh, calculation of the electric field for the charged ball. If we have the charged wire, this is a wire. This wire has infinite long, so finite, infinitely long. long. Then we can sketch um, a cylinder like this to enclose the wire. And you will find that this cylinder uh, is parallel to the wire and the wire is at the center of the cylinder. And because we know the electric field generated by the cylinder is perpendicular to the wire. It's like a radio or radiation. If we look through the top, this is a wire. This is a wire. And the cylinder we sketch this one. And the electrical field will look like this. Okay. This is an electrical field generated by a, a, a wire. And let's calculate the flux. We know the top surface of the cylinder, the top surface of the cylinder is parallel to the electric field. That means the A top is perpendicular to the electric field. The cosine 90 degree equal to zero. So the flux on the top equal to zero. The same thing, the flux on the bottom is equal to zero. So this two surface has zero contribution to the flux. Only the side surface has a flux. And the side surface had the area equal to circumference, two pi, the radius, suppose I know the radius is 
is R. So it will be 2 pi R. That's the circumference of the, uh, the surface times the length of the cylinder we sketch. This is a total surface area times the E. This is the electric field that will be equal to the Gaussian's law equal to 4 pi k times the charge inside. Okay, so then we will have the electric field equal to 4 pi k q over 2 pi r l. And we will have l over q is a constant equal to o and k times 2 times 1 over r. r is the distance from the center of the wire to the surface we sketch. So that means if the sketch we sketch, uh, the sur surface we sketch is far away from the wire, then the electric field will decrease as a function of 1 over r. So if the distance r double from d to 2d doubled, then the electric field is going to turn half. It will be from electric field to electric field over 2d. Okay, so then let's go back to the mastering physics of the, uh, number 8. Over here. Six here. Uh, there is an electric field uh, strength 10 centimeter from the wire. And we know um, the electric field at the five centimeter is this one. Now the, the length doubled, then the strength is going to half. So we have this one. E over two, that will be nineteen hundred. Okay, so uh, this is what I'm going to talk today. We talk about the machine physics and also uh, the Gaussian's law. Then the purpose is to use Gaussian's law to calculate the electric field generated by a continuous object. And we will do more practice on Friday and tell you how to use Gaussian's law to solve the problem. So uh, that is, and on Friday, we have uh, another quiz. And if you have a question about the, the grading of the quiz, uh, you can ask a question, okay? If you don't have a question, you can go. See you on Friday. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.